Setting up the Speedwino for Tuner Studio Control. At the end of part 1 firmware, we set up Tuner Studio with a previously set up Speedwino. In this one we'll go into more detail and do a full first setup of a Speedwino board and a setup of Tuner Studio so it controls it properly. The first thing we have to do is set up our jumpers on the Speedwino board. So you go to your board in the wiki, select jumper configs or scroll down and we get to jumper configs. First we have to set JP1 and this selects the ignition output whether it's a 12 volt square wave or a 5 volt square wave. Remember this is logic level signals only so it goes to a smart coil or an igniter. So no direct connections to dumb coils. I think most coils are 5 volt square wave signal but check your coil in case it's a 12 volt one. On the V4 board it's this jumper here. This side is 5 volts, so when you jump at these two pins, it sends 5 volts to the ignition ICs. If you connect it on this side, it'll send 12 volts to it. Next we come to JP2 and 3. This selects our trigger input sensors. If you have it set to Hall, which includes optical sensors, you're inputting a 5 volt square wave into the Speedwino. Digital 5 volt square wave. If you select VR, it runs a signal through the VR conditioner, if you have one fitted, and will convert it down to a 5 volt square wave. This includes any hall sensors that output a 0 to 12 volt, or a VR sensor that puts out an analog sine wave of many volts. VR sinusoidal analog wave. This one is 15 volts peak to peak, but I believe they can reach over 100 volts peak to peak, and need converting to a digital 5 volt square wave by a VR conditioner. JP2 is the crank trigger input. JP3 is the cam trigger input. Back to the V4 board. This is JP2 crank. JP3 cam. Hall setting is 0 to 5 volt square wave inputs only. VR is for more than 5 volt square waves. All analog waves from a VR sensor. On a side note, if you're using the hall setting with the VR conditioner plugged in and you're not getting a signal, just unplug the VR conditioner. In the schematic, VR1 is the crank and VR2 is the cam. Back to the wiki, and we have JP4 and 5, which are pull-up resistors for the crank and cam. In a digital world, a pin can have a floating voltage that can trigger the micro. So we use a large value resistor to pull any residual voltage high or low. This jumper is pulling the pin up so it sees 5 volts as the default. These should be jumpered on when a sensor is used that switches between ground and floating, which is most Hall effect sensors. If you come down here, there is a table of configurations for the jumpers. Back to the board, and this is JP4 crank pull up, JP5 cam pull up. And in the schematic, you can see this jumper just connects 5 volt through this resistor to the input VR, and that holds it at 5 volts until a signal comes in. Now that we have the board configured, we'll move on to Tuner Studio. I'm going to go through this section fast because it's already been done in detail in part 1 firmware. Go to tunerstudio.com, download your Tuner Studio MS version and install. Go to the Speedwino wiki and the firmware and download this download bundle. Go to your download, extract the compressed file and remember where it is. Plug in your Speedwino, Device Manager, Ports, mine is COM6. Open to your studio, new project, give it a name, select Browse, find your extracted Speedwino folder, enter, reference, select Speedwino I and I, next, pick Celsius or Fahrenheit. Next, select COM6 from over here. Next, finish. Now we're connected. Now we'll go into a detailed first setup of Tuner Studio. The first thing we have to do is load the base tune. So you go File, Load Tune. We go to our extracted Speedwino bundle. Hit Reference, Base Tunes, Speedwino Base Tune, Open. Send and burn the configuration to the controller. Restart. 
unplug the USB and plug mm -hmm. it back in. First we have to select the board. So you go settings, engine constraints, and down here is a board layout. Each board uses a different pin on the Mega to control the Speedwino. As an example, version 4 might use pin 20 as channel 1 ignition, whereas version 3 might use pin 30. So if you don't select the correct board at the start, it'll send the instruction to the wrong pin and won't work. My board is V3. Burn that. Restart. Close. Next, we have to calibrate our sensors. If you want to start a car, you definitely have to calibrate the sensors beforehand. So it's tools. Start with calibrate TPS. Close the throttle. Then press get current. Then we give it full throttle. And press get current. Then just accept. The way the TPS works was covered in part 1, but we'll quickly go over it again. The TPS sensor is a potentiometer which is acting as a voltage divider and that sends a voltage back to the mega. The mega has an analog to digital converter that breaks the 5 volts into steps. And this number is the voltage that's equivalent to the step. So when you hit accept, this number will be equivalent to 0 on the gauge and this number will be equivalent to 100. And we can control our TPS. Back to tools. Calibrate pressure sensor. You'll notice it's currently reading 213 kPa. That's because the default sensor for the speed we know is the MPX4250A. The A means it's absolute and the 250 is a 250 kPa above absolute. Leave this as standard if that's the map sensor you're using, but I'm using the GM1 bar. The rest you can leave at default. Burn. My sensor is a bit faulty because this should be reading 101. Back to tools. Calibrate temperature sensors. First is the coolant temperature sensor. You can use the three point thermistor generator where you get the resistance values from your workshop manual. This is the coolant sensors resistance over temperature table for the 1990 protege. Pick two of the extreme temperatures for your area and interpolate one for the middle. Or you can select a common sensor from the drop down menu. Mine is a Mazda, and this fills the three-point table. Up here is the bias resistor value. This was covered in part one, but I'll quickly explain it again. If you go to your schematic for your board, and you have your coolant temperature sensor, it's this resistor here. If you remember our voltage divider theory in part one, this is the R1 resistor. And the coolant sensor is the variable R2 resistor. And if you look at the inlet air temp sensor, it's also the 2490 ohm resistor. For more details, go to the wiki, hit configuration index, scroll down to sensor calibration, and on this page is a sensor calibration for all the sensors. Just scroll down to the coolant and intake temperature sensors, and down here, note that the standard speed window build is to have a 2490 ohm bias resistor. So back to Tuner Studio and 2490 here right to controller we go to the air temperature sensor again I'm using the Mazda and the same 2490 right to controller right complete close back to tools calibrate AFR sensor and with the EGO sensor, pick your setup. I have the 14.7 SLC32, so I'll write that to the controller and close that. And now the sensors are calibrated. I'll test the coolant temperature with my simulator. And it's not working properly. That's because it's a 10k potentiometer when we set the sensor to a Mazda sensor. So just open it up again. and fudge some numbers until it works. I'll try 50,000. Write to controller. Write completed. Close. Now we test the coolant temp pot on the simulator. And it seems to work properly now. 
And now you know how to set sensors for a car and how to fudge them for your simulator.